Microsoft is reportedly in planning to invest an additional $10 billion into OpenAI, the startup behind the chat GPT tool that's taken the world by storm. Could a deal help the tech giant bite into Google's dominance in search? Let's bring in Brent Thill of Jefferies. Brent, great to have you with us. Um, how strategic is this in your view? We think it's really strategic long term. Short term, obviously, there's still some kinks in the system. If you ask ChatGPT, who the CEO of Twitter was last week, it said Jack Dorsey. And obviously, it's Elon Musk. If you ask the system who, world, who won the World Cup, it says my database is limited uh, to two, back to 2021. So, uh, obviously, uh, there's incredible amount of promise, but today, in terms of real time, it's not there. We think over time, with the help of Microsoft and ChatGPT, this could be really revolutionary. We believe in AI-infused apps and infrastructure, not AI on its own. So if you envision a world where you open up PowerPoint, say, for the Fast Money team, write uh, an update on the, the market, uh, uh, what's happened so far in 23. You go into PowerPoint, put a, a family in front of a mountain with a ski resort in the back, uh, simple things like that. You can ask the system to help self-populate these applications. Outlook, respond to an email, uh, you know, with 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 uh, with the simple terms. So we think ultimately, if you think about what they could do, they can fuse it with their applications, uh, their AI technology inside these apps. Uh, you look at Azure, which is the backend infrastructure running. That's a huge opportunity as well. Um, so Microsoft's not alone. Adobe has a product called Sensei. Uh, you have uh, Salesforce.com, which has Einstein. Others are, are trying to embark upon this, but clearly this is really exciting. I don't think it has an impact short term for Google. Long term, we'll see. Uh, but no one's going to use this for looking for a coffee shop or near term, uh, you know, Warriors tickets or concerts in the short term. Long term, we'll see. And I think, again, it's super promising. So we, we think we have a, a early view where it can be uh, again, very impactful across the Microsoft suite. Again, I'm talking from a financial analyst perspective. I'm not a product manager, but I've come up with like 20 different examples of how I think they can use it. Whether they put that into practice or not, I don't know. But mm -hmm. I think there's a very clear roadmap that, that we see that can be really exciting right. for Microsoft. Hey, Brent, from a financial standpoint, let's call it intermediate term. Do you think that that Microsoft would have the best success disrupting Google search? Or do you think that long term, because of Microsoft's, um, you know, their lead that they have in productivity tools, will it be integrating that with, you know, Outlook and, and 365 and that sort of thing? Where, where, where would you, if you're looking five years out, expect Microsoft to get the biggest financial benefit? I think in productivity and AI infused apps and infrastructure, personally, I think taking Google on is not a good endeavor. I wouldn't want to try uh, try that. It's like trying to uh, shoot three pointers against Steph Curry. Not going to happen. So my my view would be stick with what you're good at. And Microsoft has done this in the past, where they wander. They got Nokia. They went into all these other areas that they shouldn't have gone. Stay true to what you are. Enterprise software at the core. Yes, is there some help that this could could help with Bing? Is there some other consumer apps they could build, perhaps? But I think that the challenge, again, I've covered Microsoft over 20 years, used to be a Microsoft developer. The challenge that they have is when they get outside their core lane, they screw it up. And so I think this is in their core lane of helping with productivity. Uh, again, there's a call option, and I may be totally wrong, but there's definitely no doubt a call option to, to help uh, make broader search better. But if you look at today, you can't find things in Microsoft Outlook. We use Outlook as a firm and try to search an email. And then you go to Gmail and your personal account and you can find things inside Gmail a lot faster. So it just comes back to basic things that they, mm -hmm. they can use uh, to help uh, make these applications smarter. Brian, thanks. Appreciate it, Brent Thill. Thank you. By the way, we asked chat GPT, can Microsoft beat Google? For fun, because why not, right? This yeah. is this is what ChatGPT um, responded with. It's possible by investing in OpenAI, Microsoft would have access to this cutting edge technology and could potentially use it to improve its search features. Yeah, right? That's exactly what Brent just said. <laughs> do you remember Watson? Oh, maybe ChatGPT will replace financial oh, analysts. <laughs> do you remember Watson though? Wasn't yeah. it, that was like going to be the AI thing? It was going to be transformative for. 
maybe it was IBM before it's time. Before, before it was. It was. It, it may be. Right. Yeah. Timing is everything. Well, it, so we're talking long term. How about in the short term? Microsoft reports in two weeks. And yeah. what I want to hear about is really where there's margin pressure in, in this cloud business that they really have, have. It's been their golden goose. And it's been certainly the cash cow for them right here and now. I just think it's become so competitive in this space. I think we may start to hear about some of that. It's interesting. Dan brought this up last night. Jim Cramer this morning on Squawk on the Street. Wonderful Fine show. Fine program. Mm -hmm. Fine program. Nine, yes. nine to ten, I believe. And Jim said for the first time in a long time he sold Microsoft in his charitable trust because of the interview that Dan cited CNBC Asia, I believe, Satya Nadella in yeah. India. And he talked about things that were somewhat dramatic for the, for the short-term forecast of his company. Now, it's a more reasonable valuation now, 22 times next year's numbers, but you got to believe there's going to be a demand issue for Microsoft, given everything we've heard from some of these other companies. Yeah.